Okay, this video is for those that are using the electronic ignition instead of points. And I've got my distributor cap off. And this is the 1181 and 1181 LS, or lobe sensing. Here's the LS version. Here's the 1181 with the magnet ring initially I had in there. I've had it about installed in the car for about 15 years now and then I lost a cylinder and come to find out um, one of the magnets came out and that's why it dropped a cylinder. There's normally a little plastic strip that's laminated on here that came off too and then you lose a magnet. And the same thing happened to my Buick. So these are kind of a problem after time. It's like they don't use the right glue or they need to use more of epoxy or more of a sandwich design I'm not sure but anyway here's the lobe sensing unit that uses no magnetic ring at all it just detects the ridges the lobes here on this distributor cam I guess is what you'd call it the eight lobes it detects the change in flux lines as it goes around and that's what triggers it and triggers your spark something to note um, for those that want to use these and these do work but after time they, they can come apart you loop it over and then you stick it under there you know you loop it under stick it up and under there and then when you're done with that you mount the 1181 right where the points went and as you can see there's a little metal dowel right there and that goes in the hole right here and so it goes where the points go. The 1181 lobe sensor LS doesn't mount where the points were or where the 1181 does. I was told that it mounts about 90 degrees differential over here where the where the condenser was at one time. So and I don't know that that's going to work either, but we'll give it... Oh, yeah, it does. It looks like it goes right there, baby. So we'll get this LS mounted. And uh, let me go to the other side. That looks right. That's not... Um, I would not... That's not 90 degrees. That's 180 degrees. It's on the complete opposite side. Interesting. The nice thing is, is you won't have this ring of magnets on there which adds centripetal forces and of course reliability issues another thing is is when you do the, the 1181 like that one the old one originally I had to pull the distributor out because I had too much up and down play on the shaft which can cause it to rise and fall and of course you need the proper air gap between the the magnetic ring there and the pickup and so that could change as you rev the engine up and down if you have too much in play in your shaft. So you got to pull the distributor out, push the roll pin off, take the gear off, put some shims on there, put it back on, put in the roll pin, then you got to re-clock it and it's a hassle. Whereas the LS, it looks like it's supposed to be uh, the load sensing. This like, looks like a bolt in and go. My only concern is that the only two screws I have are from where the 1181 original one came out and now this one's going over to where the condenser was and I'm hoping those two holes there are the same thread with the two screws that I still have. We'll see. So I'll get this mounted and then we'll okay, see. Okay, it did use the same two screws. There's one there and the other one right there. And it's mounted. But my wires are shooting out on this side so maybe I'm supposed to because my distributor cap, the hole is right here where the wires want to shoot out. It's going to shoot out over here, so I'll have to sort that. I certainly don't want these wires up like this or getting into the rotor cap or anything like that. So I'll have to sort that here. I'll let you know what I figure out. Okay, I did just a little wire tie like that. And as you can see, the wires can be pulled through. But it'll keep them from coming up into the rotor cap. I'm going to put a little plastic protection here as my wires shoot out the the hole and I ground the corner off of the inspection or adjustment cover for the old points so it'll shoot out through there. I'm just wondering since 
this is 180 degrees opposite if it's possible to to clock this distributor cap 180 degrees so that this um, adjustment hole for the old points it could be on the back side and my wires could shoot straight out that way I don't know all I did was mount it where it's supposed to be and everything else is going to stay the same and go ahead and mount my rotor cap on there now okay rotor cap is nice and snug now I'll put the distributor cap back on and then I'll make a phone call to Pertronics and ask them about that if I can clock that 180 degrees or not because otherwise my wires are not gonna reach my coil as they used to and I'd have to splice some extensions on here and I don't know if I want to do that if that would lower my voltage so what is it 3 dB loss every connection you make I guess I could solder them on it probably drop it down to 2 dB or something but anyway I'll make okay, a so I called Pertronics and I told them about this and they said uh, that should be fine and they said because it's 180 degrees out, out of phase of the other one they said they did the math and it should shake out so I'm gonna see about routing my wires this way going this way it looks like yeah they'll reach so I'll just crimp the ends on that comes with it and we should be done okay I've crimped the ends on and now I'm gonna put black to negative and red to positive and she should light we'll see okay black to negative red to positive she's all hooked up make sure that's pushed down all the way make sure that stays closed had to fix a broken little vacuum attachment and put on a new line it's one thing about working on old cars is some of the stuff these lines get dried and hard but got her fixed so we'll light it here and get the carburetor uncovered get the air box back on air cleaner and all that we'll see if she'll light stand by okay air cleaners back on as you can see it has not been started oh, just kidding so okay we'll see if she'll light this was the uh, cylinder that lost the magnet I thought it was a plug wire so I put a new one on I'm gonna have to oh there we go I think I'll put my auto light back on I like that's a Bosch okay let's see if she'll light if uh, Pertronics did the engineering right the timing should still be as it was which is right where I want it let's see Hmm, no joy. Oh, there it goes. And it actually sounds pretty good. I am amazed. Wow. Oh yeah, it's hitting on all eight. I'll get my timing light on here and check it. Let me get my timing light. Okay, so she runs, but I think the timing's not quite the same, so I'm going to have to uh, loosen my distributor nut there and get my timing light and readjust my timing. But it's close enough so it started. Okay. Yeah, it was about... I had to loosen that nut down there and, and rotate the distributor. It was about 18 to 20 degrees after top dead center, so I'm surprised it started at all. Uh, let me go around here. That might be a default parameter on uh, Pertronics because after top dead center is certainly safer than before top dead center as far as a default parameter. But I'm at 6,000 feet and I'm supposed to be running 10 degrees static at 600 RPM and I'm 6,000 feet, one and a half degrees for every 1,000 feet, so that gives me another three degrees so I should be about 13 degrees static uh, I bumped it, I've got it right at about 14, so 13, 14, it's 
really close, I'd say 14, so I should be good to go. Um, what else can I say? I guess I'll put my auto light plug wire back on. I like those, they're thicker. And um, what else? I guess um, it should be good to go. I'll have to test drive it and see, but it uh, seems to be doing well. I'll go ahead and start it. There you go. So we'll take it for a test drive, and it, it should be good to go. Uh, normally racers take them up to 3500 RPM and they like to uh, time them at 36 degrees dynamically. I haven't checked to see if that's where I'm at or not. But by going by the book parameters, the book, the data plate says 10 degrees at 600 RPM, you know, with no vacuum advance. And I'm at about 14 because of my high altitude, so we should be good. So there you have it. So it wasn't dead on with the other ones like I thought. It was actually way uh, after top dead center, which was a safe way to go. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps somebody who's interested in the 1181 or 1181 LS Pertronics. Thanks. Bye.